gentlemen to another episode of live hour youtube's premier off the clock appliance repair talk for off the clock appliance repair text oh, get myself together here i'm your host with the most brother b and you can be anywhere in the world but you're here with me ladies and gentlemen i appreciate you welcome ladies and gentlemen to another episode of live hour Tonight's show, you are not going to want to miss it. Tonight's show, I will be giving you my secrets, my seven steps to troubleshoot. I will tell you how to re reduce and eliminate, well, not eliminate, but bring them down substantially, hopefully. Your recalls, I will go into how to properly use schematics, how to properly, you know, troubleshoot. So if you need help with that, tune in for tonight because you're going to love it. I guarantee you. With that out the way, y'all know the vibes. Hit the like button if you're just tuning in before the recall guards give you recalls. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hop right into tonight's episode. 
I'd like to welcome everybody to for, for tapping in. As always, let's let's start the show off with some channel news. Let's get the bills out the way. Again, thank you for tapping in, ladies and gentlemen, in tonight's episode of Channel News. Let me pull up tonight's channel news for y'all. Okay, there y'all have it. Uh, tonight's uh, channel news, SEAL system training. Guys, 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 and gals. <sighs> Refrigerator season is upon us. Make sure this is turned down. Okay, there we go. Get a little feedback. Uh, there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, refrigerator season is upon us, ladies and gentlemen. I get it all the time. Brother B, I'm at the customer's house, and it's not cooling. Well, what do you mean? Well, I check the evaporator fan. I hear it. I check the condenser fan. I hear it. I put my hand on the compressor. And I feel it. But brother B, the compressor is hot. It's real hot, man. Well, and then this is me now. Well, brother, what, 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 did, did you look at the uh, coils? Did you see if maybe you had a defrost issue? No, brother B. I only have like a little ball in the corner. I'll send you a picture. What do you think that is? And then I'll get the picture and I'll look and I'll see an incomplete frost pattern on an evaporator coil and i'll respond back to the brother and say well brother did you tap in <sighs> brother b i don't do seal systems oh i don't do seal systems brother b i tell him put keep me on the phone I want you to talk to the customer and I want you to tell the customer that you don't do it. But keep me on the phone. Put put it on speaker so I can hear it. Oh, man, you know, I'm sorry, but you have a problem that, you know, I, I, I. unacceptable, ladies and gentlemen. That comes to an end, ladies and gentlemen. Sealed system training, July 18th through the 22nd. Do not miss it, ladies and gentlemen. We have a special guest coming into the building. Ladies and gentlemen, the fine folks at, uh, this is spelled wrong, Lockring and Vulcan will be doing live R600 training. That's right. They will be coming down to the South Florida area, and they will be hosting R600 training directly from Vulcan Lockring. You do not want to miss this. You know, I want to tell y'all the story since we're talking about R600 real quick. I did a job the other day. It was an LG. I went in there. I was confident. I was cocky. I said, no, no cool. Ah, this is going to be a compressor. I pulled out the fridge. But this one was a little different. It didn't have the board in the back. And I said, okay, more than likely the board's in the top. I didn't see the board in the top neither. I said, okay, maybe they have the board tucked by the compressor. Let me take the compressor cover off. I take the compressor cover off, and I see red tape around the capillary. I see red tape coming off the condenser. And if somebody knows in the comment section what that red tape is, means or indicates please type it in but let's just say while people are trying to uh, figure out what that red tape indicates on the seal system let's just say that when i seen that i shook my head and i realized at that moment i need to become the best r600 technician in my area because the the technology is here it's no more ducking it it's no more it's no more running away from the from the from the R six hundred. It's here, it's here. And just like 10, 15 years ago, when the when the new computer electronic control driven appliances was coming in, 
you had a gang of old techs, a gang of old techs that was saying, don't mess with that stuff. That computer stuff is garbage. Stick to the good stuff. Stick to the belt operated. You stick to the uh, timer operated appliances. You won't go wrong. Thank God I didn't listen to that narrative. I right away saw that I needed to become a beast at electronics. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm seeing the same um, signs starting to happen right now. R600 is here. It's not that it's coming. R600 is not that it's in the future. It's here. And it's only a matter of time. Thankfully, thankfully, the guy told me, listen, I'm gonna, I'm under warranty for LG. Don't worry if it's R600 and you don't feel comfortable. I'm under warranty, no problem. I didn't even charge the guy the, the service call. Now, I think I could have done it. I think I could have tapped in. I've spoken to many in text that say, Brother B, it's easy to work on R600. Just empty out the system, flush it with nitrogen, and then do your braids and do the charge. But ladies and gentlemen, that's cool and that's okay. But respectfully, I want to also learn the other way. And I want to learn it from the manufacturers of Vulcan lock ring. So again, in case you don't know, they will be down here in South Florida. Okay? They will be down here July 19th all day. So for the members who signed up, for the members who signed up and enrolled in the in the SEAL system, hands-on training that we given, you will get this live R600 hands-on training as well, okay? This is included in the SEAL Systems course, okay? So if you signed up, congratulations. You're not only going to get the 134 array and be the man in your neighborhood when it comes to SEAL systems, but you're going to be also the man in your neighborhood when it comes to R600. Why? Because Vulcan Lock Ring has confirmed they will be coming in to South Florida and they will be in attendance July 19th and they will take part of our sealed system hands-on training. So again, in case you're living under a rock, because I get them all the time, hey, Brother B, can you talk to me about your courses, please? I'm talking to you about them now. Go on over to www tmm.academics.com backslash hands-on training. Instructors are Richard Zilka, myself, American Lockering, and we also have one more manufacturer. One more manufacturer. I don't want to put the beans out yet, but the instructors just coordinating the hotels and the car, but they will be in on the 20th. Major manufacturer, they too will be in. I give you a hint. It starts with two letters. Okay. So again, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to be getting manufacturer training. You're going to be getting uh, uh, TMM academic training. Most importantly, hands-on training. Again, going over to tmmacademics.com backslash hands-on training. All right. Let's see what else we got in the news. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you like the content please hit the like button all right guys i'm very excited 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 what do you want from me we got a new course coming out august 4th august 5th two day class two day class the class is the most requested one that we get how to read schematics and diagrams how to read schematics and diagrams. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I'm going to be giving you my seven steps to troubleshooting. But if you can't read schematics and you can't read wiring diagrams, this, this, this ain't for you. You might as well just go ahead, log off, watch something else, because this ain't for you. Unfortunately, it's going to go over your head. You got to get into this. Again, it's virtual, ladies and gentlemen. $2.99 to attend. It's a two-day 
uh, eight hours a day, 16 hour uh, YouTube's premier, appliance repairs premier, uh, schematic and wiring diagram course. Okay, do not miss that. Do not miss that. I repeat, do not miss that going over right now. If you do not know how to read schematics, I'm talking to you. If you need help on reading schematics, I'm talking to you. The beautiful thing about this, ladies and gentlemen, is that if you do not attempt simply by purchasing it, the link will be forwarded to you, okay? This is an important tool to have into your arsenal. Reading schematics and diagrams is by far the number two, because theory is number one, in my opinion. The number two most important thing when it comes to applying short paper. You have to learn how to read schematics. You have to learn how to read wire diagrams. All right. Please hit the like button, ladies and gentlemen. We're almost done with channel news. Again, I'd like to thank the fine folks at Marcon for the cup. Thank y'all. And I'd like to thank Encompass. Shout out to Encompass. They gave me a beautiful book bag back there. You know what I'm saying? That's to put money in it. I appreciate y'all. All right. We're almost done with this. Uh, running a small service company again, ladies and gentlemen. If you need, if you need business advice or you're interested in starting the into the appliance repair business, my good friend David Oliva, who is a PSA board member, speaks at the annual Servicers Technical Institute. Put it this way: the guys that people look up to go to sit down in his conference. Always packs out, always does good, one of the best in the game, high-end business on the Long Island. He gave a two-hour, two-hour webinar on running a small service company. That is online for sale, $40. Check it out. Uh, email me for any information. And then finally, uh, tomorrow's class is Dishwashers 101. That's at 12 Eastern Standard Time. That class is to be held by Richard Zilka and myself. Again, we will be discussing dishwashers, theory, breakdown, component testing, cycles, etc. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's read some comments here. We got some people in the house. Who we got here? Jose Flores. Where will this training be held? Jose, thank you for tapping in, brother. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with me, and I appreciate it. Jose, this will be in uh, South Florida, okay? For more information, go on over to Boom. All right. All right. Thank you again, uh, Jose. South Florida, all right? Greg B. Greg B, what's good, Greg B? I ain't hear from you in a minute. It's always good to hear from you, man. Yeah, you know the vibes, Greg B. I had that WWF going on. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my man Israel Adesanya. He motivated me to play that, that song. You know what I'm saying? The Undertaker. Y'all hit the like button if y'all like Brother B's tunes. Untamed. Untamed. What's the vibes, Untamed? How you been, man? South Florida resident. Had the privilege to run into him at the supply store. Very nice brother there. It's an honor meeting you, man. Scap, Scap, what's the vibe, Scap? What's good, my brother and I? We on our third compressor today. Wow. That boy get into that money. Just take your time, though, Scap. You know what I'm saying? Don't rush. Don't cut corners. Remember, everything is done in the prep work. Measure twice, cut once. Eliminate the recourse, charge appropriately. Good job, Scap. My man Emmett Burke, Gardens. What's good, Emmett? Emmett says he had a refrigerator with two compressors, one, oof, 134 and 600. Look at that, y'all. Look at that. Now, for those that may not quite... Um, as, as, just coming into the industry, not, not really fully immersed into appliance repair. Let me explain to you what this brother's saying here. He's saying that inside of one refrigerator, 
not two refrigerators, inside of one, there are uh, two systems. One with a 134A and one with R600. This is the technology that's out there. And that's why when you get to the house and you say, oh, 1450, what? Oh, okay, find somebody else. No, 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 please, please. I can't, I don't know nobody, please. Manufacturers calling you, you do all 600, please. Warranty companies calling you, you do all 600, please. In my, in my opinion, I got a feeling that what's going to happen is sooner than later, what they're going to say, they're going to say all these warranty companies, they're going to start saying like, oh, you don't do all 600? Oh, yeah, then you can't do refrigerators because if we dispatch you refrigerators, it may be all 600. So, again, it's coming. Uh, be on it, all right? Saul! Saul out here acting a fool. What's good, Saul? Saul said this hands down is the best trading out there that's correct that is correct sir you are smart no one is doing seal seal, seal system training no one is trust me and if they are they're not like oh well thank you so I, I i agree thank you so i appreciate it man thank you for the kind words all right ladies and gentlemen let's get into the other mvp of the uh we're almost done with channel news this is the last portion of channel news i'll show you this is the last part but ladies and gentlemen in case you don't know our boxer app our boxer app it is the best thing since sliced bread. Live, peer-to-peer -peer tech support. We have six different channels. We're about to add seven. We're about to add Espanol. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. TMM Academics, Espanol. We have the tech chat line. We have the 911 emergency line, the SEAL system line, the business line, board and electronic repair. We'll give you a one, we'll give you a five-second clip. Five second clip of what goes on in the uh in the uh Voxer community. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. I haven't been I have been on there very lightly today. What room y'all wanna go in? Let's go in tech chat. Let's see what they was talking about in the tech chat. All right, hold on a second. Let me find the conversation here. Okay, this conversation. Okay, this is a good one. I got a um, door that won't close. The hinge, I am not sure if it's a hinge or if it's the, if it's the door itself, but the lock is not staying um, intact. You have to force the um, the door closed so it can stay, but it's springing back open. It's not like the lock is not even engaging. Is the boot from the dishwasher, I mean from the dishwasher, from the washer tub uh, sitting correctly around the opening where the door meets? Because if that gasket is just a little bit out, it won't let the door close properly. True, that scraper I think is called a putty knife. From looking at the hinge inside, uh, yeah, it is covered in, um, it's like it's been corroded. Hey guys, I have one that the hinges were rusted. And, uh... Again, ladies and gentlemen, Boxer, once you become a member of TMM Academics for $24.99, you too get access to this monthly tech to tech peer to peer support line. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a real game changer. Go on and check it out. All right, guys, we done with channel news. See, that wasn't that bad. We got to pay the bills. We got to pay the bills, guys. We got to pay the bills. Hope y'all enjoying tonight's show. Go ahead and hit the like button. Let's get into our next industry. Let's get into our next segment here, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we are going to be talking industry news. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Let's bring up tonight's industry news. As always, uh, I'm searching high and low. For articles in 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 reference to our industry, always trying to stay ahead of the curb. Let's go ahead and bring up today's article. This one ran across my desk. Let's see what this article is about. Again, this article was taken out of the sun.com. No, I'm sorry. 
the U.S. Sun. Okay, this uh, article is about an appliance repair expert says you should never buy a self-cleaning oven. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this some consumers gonna read this. Some some consumers gonna you know read this article here and say, why why would I never buy a a, a stove that has self cleaning and before we get into the article, does anybody even care to attempt why this appliance repair expert and this particular uh, uh, article here is saying that it's not good to buy self-cleaning ovens? Please, in the comment section, I'd love to hear. All right. Okay. Well, obviously... When you think about a self-cleaning range, I mean, it does sound like a good thing. You don't got to clean it. It's self-sufficient. It takes care of itself. I mean, it sounds good in theory. You know, it sounds good in theory. But uh, this gentleman here, Scott Flint, if anybody knows Mr. Flint, tell him I said, what's up? Nice uh, article. But uh, Mr. Scott Flint here says he's an appliance repair technician with over 30 years experience. Okay. Mr. Uh, Scott is saying that uh, a self-cleaning oven incinerates the crumbs and grease in your oven and turns them to ashes. Here's the key, though. This is, our, this is the part that's important to us. It does this by bringing the interior temperature of the oven to almost 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit for three to five hours, and therein lies the problem that much heat can damage components. Mr. Scott says that the self-cleaning option runs the risk of damaging the high limit melting the elements, and frying the relay board. I'm going to add to Mr. Scott's uh, 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 components to look at, and I'm even going to include the wire harness. I've seen some of the wires uh, melt due to the high, high temperatures. Okay? Uh, Mr. Scott says that it will often melt knobs and blow the light bulb too. Okay? Very good, interesting article. This is an article that I recommend you carry with you on your phone. A lot of times when we get our customers and we tell them like, look, uh, don't do this or don't do that. You know, they, they want further explanation or they want like, you know, to find out more about what you're saying. So this is a good article. This is a good article that you can give your 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 um customers again you can in the articles not too long to read it just goes into detail that it sounds good in theory the self clean but it, it often could cause a lot of damage and it could i mean it's good for us for us it's job security but if customers ever ask you like why does that happen or oh my god this that's a great article that you can let them read and, and they'll find much value in it, all right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, and that was tonight's episode of Industry News, all right? We got a couple people in the house. Oh, I know who this person is. Ladies and gentlemen, I got royalty watching tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I got the queen herself, my sister, from a different mister, Mrs. Solid Steps to Wealth, Miss Ward. Miss Ward, what's good, Miss Ward? How you doing? I don't even see you no more. I don't know if you in America, if you in Europe. I, last time I heard you opened up an appliance repair shop in Neptune. You got another one coming in Saturn. You got two in, in Pluto. You're doing your thing, Miss Ward. Shout out to you. I hope I see you when I have my, my hands on training. All 600 is going to be there. Come tap in. You heard? Greg B. That's the vibe. Yep, that's right. Greg B. is going to blow a fuse after using me. That's correct. All right. This is good information during the during the Thanksgiving time. 
that's when I typically see a lot of this stuff. You know, people know that their families are gonna come over. So right before that, they're like, let me clean my arm and all. And they use the self-clean and boom. And then they're calling us, oh, yeah. you know the vibes. Ideal, ideal, what's good, man? Thank you for tapping in. Six Trey and Paula Rag, dude. So it's good seeing you, man. Long time subscriber right here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm hitting the like button for you tonight, 6 3 Impala. You've been following me a long time, man. Nothing but love and respect over here, you heard? All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we just went into uh, all of the uh, industry news, okay? Let's get into our next segment tonight. Tool Talk. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's episode of Tool Talk. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to give you guys a speech. Boy, I got a nice one for you today. Ladies and gentlemen, please hit the like button before the recall guards give you recalls. Again, if you get recalls, it's because you watch my show and you don't be hitting the like button. Hit the like button, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all going to thank me. Tonight's Tool Talk. Ladies and gentlemen, this thing here is a beauty. Must have, must have, must have, must have, must have. Did I say must have? Must have, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell y'all about this bad boy here. Let me tell y'all about this bad boy right here. Yo. Let me tell you about this bad boy right here. This is the truth. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. An appliance repair. You always, you always, you always are going to run through your tires. It's inevitable. You're going to go through ties quicker than all your friends, your family, whatever. You're going to go through ties fast. You're going to get a lot of puncture ties, too. That, too, is a fact. And one thing about them, they always come when you never have the time to deal with it. They don't come on Sunday when the Jets is losing and you could run down to the tie shop. No. They come when you got nine jobs and you just got a recall. So now it's 10. That's when you get tire issues. That's when you get headaches. I'll tell you another thing, how I came into the possession of this bad boy. My service vehicle for the longest has a problem. The battery drains, right? There's a load on it, I'm sure. that One of the loads is, is when, when I turn off the car, it's slowly draining the battery. So if I don't get back to it quick, when I turn on the vehicle, it'll this bad. Unless I disconnect it from the negative. Now I got to get it fixed. I haven't had time. Too much work. But this bad boy, and I hook this up, boom, fires me right out of a hole. Ladies and gentlemen, one time I was in Miami Gardens. If you ever seen the show, The First 48, you know how they display Miami and them and them areas? I was in one of them areas in my service van, right? Now, one thing about these areas, when you stop at the liquor store at nighttime, <laughs> some of the most questionable individuals is outside, solicited. And shout out to the questionable individuals, you know what I'm saying? They're normally harmless, but you may have one or two knuckleheads, but... You got your service vehicle. You're just not in the right frame of thought to deal with that. And you got all this property, all these parts, you know, in your van. You got to get this van up out of here. This is the worst place to do this. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you the story. I turn off my vehicle. I go in the liquor store. Get me a bottle. I'm like, all right, I got something for the night. I'm about to go home. It's all good. I walk out. Sure enough. Hey, hey, Slim. You got a dollar? No, I would show love. You get a homie's a dollar. If I got it, walk back to the service vehicle, put the key in, try to turn it. I said, nah, not here. No. I said, whoa. I said, give it a few minutes. Give it a few minutes. Maybe it's having hiccups. I said, uh-uh. I pulled out, I pulled out fat, fat cat right here, you heard? I pulled out fat cat right here, you heard? Ladies and gentlemen, please hit the like button. You need to have this in your vehicle. 
for $157, ladies and gentlemen, you have a compressor. You have a jump starter. You also have USB A uh, ports. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all know that some of our, our equipment now uses USB. You know, your, 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 some, it, I recommend all the equipment you buy now, buy it rechargeable. Headlamps, rechargeable. Flashlights, rechargeable. I don't recommend batteries no more. Anything that could be recharged, I'm a fan of because it's continuous reuse. Ladies and gentlemen, say you forgot to charge something at nighttime. No problem. Hook this up, the USB right here. Put it to USB. Put it in the back of your truck. And while you drive into your job, your device is charging. It's a power bank. It's a jump starter. And it's an air compressor. When you hook up your, 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 your car, look. When you hook this up to your tire, and you start to inflate the 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 you the display here it's um it tells you your psi on your top and then you could select like oh i want 40 psi 35 psi 45 psi once it starts to inflate when it gets to the right cutoff then it will it will turn off the machine it also has leds that say, say you break down in the middle of the night look of all the places I don't work, there's a place in Georgia called Alpharetta. Alpharetta, Georgia. Look, y'all, I'm from New York City. I'm not used to no Alpharetta, Georgia. In respect and shout out to Alpharetta, Georgia, you heard? But this place is like, how can I put it to you? This place is like the middle of nowhere. Like if you break down here, you stuck, stuck. You stuck, stuck. And some and, and and there'd be no gas station sometimes for miles in them back roads in, in Georgia. This little light right here, clutch, clutch. Cause while you on the side of the road, say your car die, you trying to put gas in, I mean, I mean, um in your tire, or you know, even if you want to signal it, you know what I'm saying? You could you could signal, like you know what I'm saying, it's a good device, y'all. I strongly recommend it. It's a nice episode of Tool Talk. Get this in your van right now. Don't wait for it. And if you don't want it in your van, put it in your baby mother's van so that your kids is safe, your, your loved ones is safe. It's a great gift, great, great uh, use of uh, uh, machinery there, all right? Show y'all some of the pictures. All right. That's a different one. There y'all go. Again, ladies and gentlemen, please hit the like button. That's tonight's episode of Tool Talk, all right? I hope y'all liking tonight's episode of Tool Talk. All right. Ah, let's read some comments. Saul, charged up. What's good, big homie? It's my man right there. No the vibes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get now into our main appetite, our main course. Let's get into the uh, reason that y'all came here tonight, and that is the seven steps to troubleshooting. All right, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we are talking about the seven steps of troubleshooting. Let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, I had a, a class the other day, right? And, you know, I, I was teaching these guys all this theory and how to use man. No, this was for our intro class. I was teaching guys like, you know, how washers work and dryers and heating elements and blah, blah, and 240 and how to test receptacles from the wall. You know, I'm, I'm doing, I'm teaching these guys all this hardcore stuff, right? And about day four into the into the into the training, right? One of the guys that I ain't gonna say his name, but he let's just say his name is TP. TP, and he's from Georgia too. So it's funny that it's all funny. If you're watching TP, what's good? So he tells me, he says to me, So, brother B, let me get this right. 
if I get to a tribe and it's not heathen, the first thing I should check is what? I was like, brother, brother, I brought you this far, brother, for you to be like that? I brought you this far? No, brother, that's not the right way to think. You're not supposed to get to a job and be like, oh, if it's this, then I think it's this. Don't pattern recognize. Don't 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 rely on muscle memory. Don't don't rely on, on like stuff that you've seen in the past or stuff that you've seen that your friend did or stuff that you read online that this guy said, hey, I did this and this worked for me. Don't rely on that. That's not the right way to troubleshoot. I'm going to tell you that tonight the right way to troubleshoot, all right? So tonight, step one, the number one step in troubleshooting, ladies and gentlemen, right? And I'm, write this down, y'all. Write this down. Tonight is going to be a good one. The number one step is rely on your theory, okay? And tonight's episode is inspired by the Master Samurai. You know, he got that 10-step uh, tango, I think they call it. That, I know that's what they call it. And uh, I wanted to give him, you know, his props and his praise, but I wanted to like do my own version of it. And um, I want to show y'all my, hold on. Let me, uh, okay. Number one, first step, rely on theory. What do I mean rely on theory? Every appliance has specifications. Every appliance has unique uh, uh, standards to it. Or, or parameters. What do I mean by that? All right, I'm going to show you a slide here, right? I'm going to show you a slide here, right? And this is what I mean when I say about, like, relying on theory. You need to know the theory of these of these machines. I had this this um, stupid um, thing open, and it closed on me. And I didn't even close it. Hold on, y'all. It's loading. It's a big PDF. Okay, here we go. All right, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna show y'all this PDF, right? I wanna share this PDF with y'all. And when I say step one, rely on your theory, right? The first thing you need to do is rely on your theory, right? I'd like to read something from. This is from Whirlpool, okay? This isn't from Brother B. This isn't from you know the guy I heard at the tech shop. No, no, this is from Whirlpool, okay? This is from Whirlpool themselves. We're talking about refrigerators, right? I want to read something from you from Whirlpool, okay? I want to read something from you from Whirlpool, okay? Let's read this real quick, y'all, all right? It says here. Before we examine... The common seal system failures, let's briefly review normal operating conditions of a 134A system, a.k.a. most refrigerators we work on, unless it's R600 or it's R12. So, specifications. Again, we're talking about theory. This is the specs, y'all. This is the specs. We should know our freezer compartment temperature. Normal range, zero, plus or minus three. We should know fresh food compartment temperature. Normal range, 38, plus or minus three. We should know compressor run current. 5.5 to 1.5 amp. Now, if you enter the seal system, well, this is information that you would learn. But say you're not into it. You still need to know this kind of stuff. Your frost pattern needs to be full. The defrost. What is the defrost for? What is the purpose of it? It is to prevent ice from plugging the coil. Condenser liquid level. Condenser temperature. Suction line. If you don't know what the suction line is, go on over to tmmacademics.com backslash hands-on training and consider yourself an expert by the time you graduate on what that means. Compressor discharge line, you'll be a beast at what that means. But let's talk environment. Anybody care to talk about what, what a refrigerator should be out? The environment, 55 to 95 degrees. Operating 
voltage, improper voltage, air movement, all that, all that. That's when I say rely on theory, guys, that's the theory. By us knowing how the operated, how the unit operates, by us knowing what is supposed to happen under a normal circumstances, anything that's out of the normal, that's what we're going to harp into. That's what we're going to harp into. Okay, so step one, rely on your theory. Acclimate yourself with your theory, guys. Acclimate yourself with your theory. Open up the book, the Conhart book. Go through every appliance. How does a washer work? What's the first uh, cycle? After that cycle, what does it do? While this cycle is on, what components is operating? How do they receive the voltage? All right. Now, let's talk about step two. So that's step one. Before anything, troubleshooting. Before anything, step one of troubleshooting is you have to rely on your theory. You're going to go into the unit. You're not knowing what's, up, what's going on. Uh, rely on your theory. Okay? Now, let's get into step two. Retrieve symptoms and error codes. Retrieve symptoms and error codes. Okay, number two. Retrieve sy symptoms mm -hmm. and error codes. What do I mean by that? Okay, now I done said to look for all the common sense things, right? All the basics. Now, say that you see something wrong with it. Or you get there, you already gonna rely on your theory, but in your diagnosis, you see an error code pop up, you hear a sound, you hear, you feel the unit warm, you see defrost in the back. You're 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 getting error codes and you're getting system symptoms. Okay. The the, the first thing I do, I walk in, I rely on my theory. The second thing, I'm like an investigator. I'm dissecting everything. I'm looking for anything. I don't see anything. I'm going right into the computer. I'm going to put this thing in diagnose, diagnostics mode. And, um, well, no, 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 not yet, not yet. Let's say that we, we do get an error code. Brother B, I saw an error code. You did? Okay. Well, that brings us to number three. So let's say we do get an error code, right? We have to interpret them and look for remedies. So step three. Interpret um, error code and follow manufacturer suggestion. Okay, what do I mean by that? Okay, so sometimes, guys, when, when, what I mean by that is this so you get an error code right this is what it'll look like okay you get an error code right let's say that the error code is a communication error echo romeo charlie oscar erco right so now a lot of times the guys is going to see that error code on the door they're going to see E-R-C-O. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to Google it right away. E-R-C-O, communication now. Then they're going to go to the phone and run to the van. Hey, man, you know what? I left something. I'll be right back. Hey, bro, I got an E-R-C-O. What you think that is? This is how troubleshooting is done in the streets. This is how it's done. They, they do this kind of stuff. How I know? Because I used to be one of them. But that's not how you do it. You have to... Number two, like I number step three, you have to interpret the error code and look for the remedies. Let's interpret. This is how you interpret it. You, you get the model number, you get the schematic, service manual, and then you find out what does that error code mean? What is the manufacturer trying to tell me? What does ERCO mean, right? What, what is that? So let's see what that is. It's a communication error. So now, when I say follow manufacturer's suggestion, this is the this is what the manufacturer is telling us to do. 
Step one, check loose connection. Very possible, very possible. You did got moved from the garage to the kitchen. They just bought the unit on Facebook and forgot to tell you that they laid it down and then they stood it upright. You didn't ask and they didn't tell you. But in that, the wiring harness got a jar. That's step one. Check the loose connections. Step two, check your red to your white. Con one. We And, and again, if you subscribe to the TMM uh, academic program on Saturdays, and, and if you come to our lectures, you, you know what this means, con one. This is the connector. And you know how to identify pin one, pin two, pin three. So again, they're telling you to go to con one and they're saying, uh, oh God, red to white, right? Check red to white. So if you get 12 volts, what's the action? Go to step three. Now, if we don't get 12 volts, well, check the hinge. They're referring to the door hinge at the top of the unit or change the main PCB. I would much rather, I would feel a lot more comfortable going down to Marcom, Encompass, APD, Reliable, whoever, Fox, any one of these guys, that they no longer give the return. Before you used to could return it, not no more. They stopped doing that about five, six years ago. They will return as long as you ain't plug it in. Now, if you buy it and it's an electronic, now it's a dub. It's not happening. <laughs> What you gonna do when that board's three four hundred, and you're not sure, or you think it's the board, or uh, maybe it's the board, or probably uh, you got a hunch? Nah, we don't operate like that here. You know how we operate? We go exactly to what that manual said, and it said go to con one on one, connect the one on one, go red to white, and it said you're supposed to get twelve volts. And and what? What are the 12 volts that we're talking about? Are we talking AC or DC? That's that's a little trick question, you know? Typically, when you see 12 volts, what are they referring to? Okay, so now that we don't check that, we got to check orange to white. And we're going to get 0 to 5. And I ain't going to tell you what the voltage is. It, tell me in the comment section. So if it's 0 to 5, we're gonna change we're gonna change the display board. I never change no display boards. I probably I probably change one or two this I change Samsung display boards a lot and Frigidaire display boards a lot because the little LEDs tend to fade out. But not because they really fail too much on Frigid. I change more the main board, but not really too tough the 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 uh, UI board. Or the display board, but reading this here, if this, if my test, if this orange to white, I'm this orange to white red, don't give me, then five volts. Oh yeah, that 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 display PCB is out of here. I have full confidence. I'm gonna sleep good at night. I'm not gonna be all. Oh, maybe it's not. Do you think it is? Oh, maybe I got the wrong board. Ah, I'm gonna be confident. I'm gonna be confident. Because, you know, I'm following the protocol. I'm following the, 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 again, I'm following the manufacturer's suggestion. So, again, that's, that's number three, right? That's number three. So, now that we're doing number three, let's, let's go to number four now. Enter diagnostic mode. Step four. Enter diagnostic mode okay why do i say enter into the diagnostic mode what's so important about the diagnostic mode from the diagnostic mode a lot of stuff could be done you can enter the unit into what's called automatic test mode and this is depending on the making model some they let you some it's limited 
some give you all options in the world, but you enter into the diagnostic mode. When you enter the diagnostic mode, you can force a lot of or manually toggle on and off, meaning turning them on and off. You could turn a lot of these loads on and off. You got a problem with your defrost heater and you want to see if this unit defaults? Test mode. You got a fan in doubt. You want to measure output voltage? Test mode. You have to enter into the diagnostic mode. Again, let's let's start at the let's start at the top. Number one, we said rely on your theory, okay? You go in there off rip you're supposed to know what all how this unit works specifications outdoor temps indoor temp you're supposed to know top to bottom all the parameters of this unit step one we said step two retrieve symptoms and error codes while you did you invest the gadget checking this checking that you checking all over the place you don't see nothing enter uh, uh, into diagnostic mode, retrieve the error codes. Now that you retrieve the error codes, we said interpret them and look for the manufacturer's recommendation. Just because they say on Google, E-R-C-O means this, forget about what it say on Google. Use the manufacturer's um, text sheet for that specific unit. Don't rely on Google, don't rely on none of that. Use the text sheet for the model. They're going to give you the most accurate information. Now, if you ain't got none, it may work. It has worked for me just using generic Google searches, but preferably use the units text sheet. Okay. And now we enter this part. Now we enter in into the diagnostic mode. We enter in into the different loads, motor load, uh, Defrost mode, compressor load, damper mode. Some of them even make the ice maker harvest and everything fill up. Utilize these modes. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go to www.tmmacademics.com backslash hands-on training and wait, wait, wait for the next time we have one of our intro classes. they will probably be like September, October. Because you need to know how to put these things into diagnostic mode. You need to know how to talk to the unit. You need to know how to make the unit energize the motor load and from the board be able to test. From the board be able to test. We got to put it in into the mode though. All right. Number five, perform appropriate, uh, oh, find the appropriate circuit. Okay. This is test five. Find the appropriate circuit. That was spelled wrong. Appropri. Y'all forgive me, y'all. The word appropriate slipped my mind. All right. Find. Oh, hold on, real quick, y'all. The real MVP. Let's give Scap. Let's put Scap on the wall. Let's put Scap on the Wall of Fame here. Make the Wall of Fame. Scap, you made it. What do you want from me, Scap? You made the donation, you get put on the Wall of Fame. As soon as my Wall of Fame here, okay. As soon as my Wall of Fame here decides to load, boom. Hold on, Scab. I appreciate that, Scab. Thank you, man. I could be anywhere in the world, but I'm here with y'all. Y'all here with me, and I appreciate it, man. If y'all enjoyed tonight's content, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. And let's give uh, Scab here. Let's put him on the MVP on the wall here. All right. So, again, y'all, we talking about finding the appropriate circuit. Brother B, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean, the appropriate circuit? Well, this is what I mean by the appropriate circuit. So, uh, where is that? That schematic. Oh, it, it went away. Damn, and I had it downloaded. You see that, y'all? It just disappeared on me. Oh, hold on. Let me pull it back up. What do I mean by finding the appropriate circuit? What I mean by finding the appropriate circuit is this. Say you're working on a unit, right? And the unit is not spinning. Well, what 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 causes a, a, a washing machine, a dryer, 
a dishwasher spray arm, what would cause something to turn? The motor, right? If it's not uh, heating, what would cause the dryer not to heat? Well, you know, like find the appropriate circuit, okay? And then once you find that circuit, go to the go to the load itself. What do I mean by that? Let me show you what I mean by that. Back to the screen here. So let's go. When I when I say go to the appropriate circuit, this is what I mean. Let's go to the schematics. Bear with me, y'all. My computer's a little slow, but we almost there. It's a large file. Okay, here we go. Here's the appropriate circuit. Ah, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Come on. Come on, champ. My bad, y'all. Y'all seen that? It did it by itself, man. Right. It was down here. All right, here we go. Okay. This is what I mean when I'm talking about finding the appropriate circuit, right? Let's say we got a a, um, a situation with like a defrost, right? In the comment section, I'm gonna give you guys, I'm gonna give myself a break from talking. If we have a defrost uh, uh, failure, looking at this schematic here, right? And I hope y'all can see it. Yeah, y'all can see it. There y'all go. Y'all can see that. Looking at this schematic here, right? What are some some components that may be in question? We we dealing with a with a defrost failure on the refrigerator. When I say to find the appropriate circuit, what what, what circuit will we be looking at here? And what would be some of the components in that circuit? That's my question for tonight. The question is, what are the what is the components that we're gonna be looking at on a defrost failure on this refrigerator? In the comment section, please write it down. What are some of the components we need to look at? It looked like 25 people or however many people is looking at this. You need to go on over, sign up. TMM Academics backslash hands-on training uh, for our schematic class. Guys, if we looking at it, there we go, Ed. There we go, Ed. There we go, Ed. And Ed, I'm going to challenge you, Ed. If you look carefully at that schematic, it's on there. What, it's not necessarily called a bimetal. It's called the defrost terminator. But I'll take bimetal. So somebody said it here, defrost heater, defrost thermostat, and Saul, good job, the control board. Good job, Ed. So this is the circuit. This is the circuit. This is my circuit. When I'm talking about finding my circuit, finding my appropriate circuit, this is my appropriate circuit. So now that I found my appropriate circuit, Remember, the step prior to this was put it in force mode. Now we go to our appropriate circuit. And while the unit is in the forced mode, the board is going to be sending output voltage to the component. So in this case, if it's the heater, and let me see if I could draw, y'all, because there's a way to draw on this, you heard? Give me one second to figure this out. It's called sketch. It's a way to do this. It's a way to do this. Bear with me. I want to draw on this real quick. It's called sketch. Bear with me, y'all. There we go. Oh, yeah. Snip sketch. That's what it's called. Snip sketch. How does this work? I forgot what, what to press. There we go. Y'all bear with me. I'm going to draw this circuit for us, all right? Windows logo key, shift, and S. I 
I got it, y'all. Bear with me, y'all. It's loading. All right. So here's this here's this uh, circuit, y'all. So over here, all this, this is my board side, okay? Everything over here, this is all my board. But coming out of my board, oh, boy. My bad, y'all. As soon as you're trying to get all the, 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 the gadgets and the tools, this is when your computer decides it wants to move on its own pace. Come on, man. What's up? Well, coming out, I don't know if you can see it. Ah. Ah. Here we go. All right, we go. All right. So coming out this board here, it'll pass through that defrost terminator by metal. It'll go into my defrost heater. And then coming out of my heater, it's going to go to my white which is my neutral, that will return to my board somewhere. You know, it will go back to my board somewhere. I will have to look at the schematic. But at these two points here is where I want to conduct my tests. I want to conduct them here, and I want to conduct it here, you know, with my voltmeter. That's checking it from the board. So when I say to find the appropriate circuit, that's what I'm referring to. That's what I'm saying. You got to put the unit in diagnostic mode, Put the unit in force mode, activate the load, and once you activate the load, you find the appropriate circuit. Everybody with me? And that's how you and that's how you would do that. Okay. Again, uh, what's the next step here? Now that we found the, the appropriate circuit, we gotta perform the appropriate test. This is step six. Perform appropriate tests. <clears throat> I didn't mean to put approximate. I meant to put appropriate. But you got to perform the appropriate tests. Not all tests is electrical. Not all tests is electrical. It's not just testing it at the board for output voltage. Sometimes you gotta disassemble the cover and you gotta get eyeballs in there. Sometimes you got a restriction holding the fan from spinning. Sometimes you the the it's a loose wire. Sometimes the blade fell off. So you you have to perform the appropriate that that's not supposed to say approximate. It's appropriate. You have to perform the appropriate tests. Okay. Let's go back to the beginning. We run in the house with our theory. We knew how things worked. We knew what to look for. Number two, once we knew that, we retrieved symptoms and we looked for error codes. We took our temps, we checked door gasket, make sure everything was closed. We look at, you know, we doing, we retrieve, retrieving symptoms and we, and then we don't see anything, pull in error codes. Number three, we was interpreting the error codes. I told you how to interpret them. That ERCO scenario that I used, follow the manufacturer's recommendations, right? After that, put the unit in test mode, whether it be forced, die, uh, manual, or automatic. Step five, um, yeah, step five, once, once you got it in test mode, find the appropriate circuit. And now step six, perform the, appro the appropriate test. Some tests, you got to do an ohms test. Sometimes you got to do a voltage test. Sometimes you got to do a capacitance test. Sometimes you got to turn. I I've done some tests on washers that I have to turn the basket to test the hall sensor. So you have to know what is the appropriate test that I have to do? I found the circuit, brother B. My, my heater, my blind, my defrost, my board, my wiring harness. But now what? Now you have to perform the appropriate test, okay? And in that test is where you're going to find your culprit. 
Which brings us to the last step now. It's final step. Validation. Step seven. Validation. Final step. Validation. What do I mean validation? Very simple, y'all. This is where, okay, from the board, you've done your test. Man, I'm getting output voltage. Let me disconnect the harness. Do a, a ohms test. See, let me do an amp test. You know, like, and, 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 and it's not coming out right. We've identified the load, but it's not coming out right. Now we got to do, now we got to get eyeballs on it. This is where we got to get a validation. If you got a defrost heater this in suspect, test it physically. Test it. Like take it out, ah, uh, test it. You know what I'm saying? If it's down to a bimetal, put it in, in, in icy water, freeze it, freeze it, freeze it. It should give you continuity. If not, that bimetal. Validate the culprit. Validate the culprit. And ladies and gentlemen, in those seven steps, I promise you, I promise you then more than likely you're going to find your headache, ladies and gentlemen. All right? And ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to an end of tonight's show. Play a little music. Give a little bit of shout-outs. And I am out of here. I thank y'all for joining tonight. Please hit the like, subscribe, and share button. If not, who's going to get you? Y'all know who's going to get you. Say it, and say it in the comment section. Who's going to get them if they don't, if they don't tap in? Let me give y'all the final, my final talking points. There y'all have it, ladies and gentlemen. Another episode, YouTube's premiere, Off the Clock Appliance Repair Talk for Off the Clock Appliance Repair Text. Don't forget, going over to tmmacademics.com and enroll in our course here. Oh, I didn't do parts test tonight. August 5th, 4th to August 5th, 299 to attend how to read schematics and diagrams. Do not, do not, do not, do not miss this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. And also, come on down July 18th. Through the 22nd, Vulcan Locker Room will be in attendance. That's right, Scap. Thank you for the donation tonight, Scap. And you know who's going to get them if they don't hit the like button. There y'all have it, ladies and gentlemen. Another episode of YouTube's Premier Off the Clock Appliance Repair Talk for Off the Clock Appliance Repair Text. I'm your host. With the most, Brother B. And you can be anywhere in the world that you're here with me. And I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, good night. <laughs>